Okay, welcome back um, after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we began studying chapter four. Uh, we are on page number 36 in the publication. And we read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 16. There are some things that we can learn about the inner witness of the Holy Spirit here. So a few things that we can learn about the work of the Holy Spirit or the inner witness of the Holy Spirit in our lives is that God has prepared things for us even before the foundations of the world, right? He has plans and purposes. And how does he reveal them to us? He reveals it to, it, to us by his spirit, okay, by his word and by his spirit. Now, the word revealed actually means, you know, to take off the cover. So if you're covering, I'm covering this water bottle with a, a, a cloth, then it means take off the cover. Unveil it means if it's veiled, you know, you unveil it, you remove it. Make it manifest means make it evident, make it known to disclose what is made unknown, okay? So when God is revealing things to us, what is disclosed, what is unknown to us, what is covered, what we can't see, he's basically disclosing it. He's basically taking off the cover. He's unveiling it to us. And the Holy Spirit is revealing those things to us. So the Holy Spirit is manifesting, making it known to us. Now, who knows the things of God? According to these verses that we read, who knows the things of God? It's the Holy Spirit who knows the things of God. And so it's the Holy Spirit who makes known the things of God to us. So if you want to know anything, you can ask the Holy Spirit. Some of you were asking this question when we were learning Trinity. How can we pray? We know how to pray for to the Father, to the Son. What do we pray? Pray to the Holy Spirit. So you can pray. We have been learning so many things. You can say, Holy Spirit, you're the one who's teaching us. Teach me. You're the one who guides who guides us. Guide me. Um, I don't know what's the truth in this situation, what this person is saying. Guide me into all truth. Or you can also say, Holy Spirit, you know the things of God. Make known the things of God to me. So even when you're reading scripture passages, you can say, Holy Spirit, make known these revelations, these truths to me okay the things that holy the holy spirit reveals to us can be understood by whom when the holy spirit reveals things to us who can understand those things look at what this word of god says who can understand those things please look at your books it's there who can understand those things or how can it be understood? The things it, the Holy Spirit reveals to us, how can it be understood? It is when you are spiritual. Yes, thank you so much. It should can be understood spiritually or when we are spiritually, uh, you know, mature, trained and growing spiritually. Okay, that is why I remember we studied last week We in Colossians, we said, you know, Paul prays and says... I want you to be filled with all spiritual wisdom and understanding. So when we have spiritual wisdom and understanding, only then can we know the will of God. Only then can we know uh, what God is speaking and telling us. So another thing, people can say that, hey, I, I can't hear God speaking to me. It's because you are not spiritually growing, right? Okay, so those living by the natural mind will only be able to understand and comprehend the things of the natural world. They will not be able to understand the things the Holy Spirit is revealing. Okay, so spiritual people can understand spiritual things. Okay, so how do we know we are spiritual beings? Is when we are born again. Our spirit man is that was dead to the things of God is now born again. A spirit man has the life and nature of God. We are able to hence hear from God and receive from God. And how do we train ourselves to receive from God is when we are praying, we are opening our hearts and minds to hear from God and when we are reading and feeding on God's word. Okay, And so 
the holy spirit is revealing things to you but if you are somebody of a natural mind you're not spending time in reading god's word you're not time spending time in praying you will find it hard to perceive and understand what the holy spirit is speaking to you okay so that is why it's so important for us to be intimate with god and so even as spiritual people when when we hear things in our spirit man or sometimes we can think it's in our spirit man but it's coming from our own minds our intellect our emotions it's important that we judge it's important that we judge everything before we accept it so how do we judge what we are hearing is through the word of god okay that is our primary way that we can know whether it's god speaking to us or it's our own voice or somebody else's voice look at what verse 16 says it says the holy spirit reveals things to us and because the holy spirit reveals things to us and makes known the things of god to us hence we have the mind of god amen hence we have the mind of christ are you excited that you have the mind of christ yeah. yes so you know what does it mean that you have the mind of christ it means you know you can know what the lord jesus is telling you about a particular situation or a matter okay so when you have the mind of christ you know clearly what the lord jesus the holy spirit or god is telling you about a particular matter okay so why do how can we say we have the mind of christ because of the revelatory work of the holy spirit the holy spirit reveals things in our spirit man and hence we can say we have the mind of christ so the holy spirit makes the mind of christ available to us why do we say we have the mind of christ because the holy spirit reveals the plans the feelings the purposes the directions the directives the desires the intents of jesus to us that is why we say we have the mind of christ okay so why do we say we have the mind of christ because the holy spirit imparts to us the thoughts the intents the feelings the desires the plans the purposes the directives of jesus to us okay now we'll move on to the inner witness of the holy spirit yes shani you have a question yeah, can you repeat again when you say um, how we can know if it is our own voice or if it's the spirit? Okay. You said so that some, I wasn't able to get the notes. Yeah. So uh, how do we uh, differentiate between your emotions and whether the Holy Spirit is speaking? I'm going to talk about how the Holy Spirit speaks to us. And then as we go along, you will be able to see uh, and get more clarity. And if you still did not get it by the end of the class, then uh, you can ask me and I will explain again. Okay. We'll just move on, but you will be able to understand because we're basically going to be talking about that. So how do we, how does the Holy Spirit impart the thoughts, the intents, the feelings, the direct the guidance, the decision, the plans and purposes of Jesus into our spirit man. One way he does is, is through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So can somebody please read Romans 8, 14 to 16, please. For many, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage, again to fear but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out of our father the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of god okay so here what does the spirit do what's the work of the spirit here come on what's the work of the spirit here it bears witness okay in where does it bear witness in our spirit okay what does the holy spirit does come on what does the holy spirit do look at verses 14 to 16. he leads us yes thank you what else what does the holy spirit does the holy spirit tells us that we are whom we are children of god and that god our father is our abba father okay and how does he do that he bears witness in our 
spirit. Okay, so each one of us, we have the privilege as children of God to be led and guided by the spirit of God. Amen. So how do we know that we are children of God? This verse says, you know, through the inner witness or to the inner conviction, the inner knowing, the inner assurance or to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. That means the Holy Spirit inside us gives us this deep conviction, this knowing, this assurance that, hey, you are a son and daughter of God. Okay? So therefore, we can conclude that the Holy Spirit uses the inner witness of our spirit as a primary way or one way that he can conform to us or confirm to us that we are sons and daughters. And it's also a way that the Holy Spirit uses to lead and guide us. Okay, So it's important to understand that the way the Holy Spirit witnesses in our spirit man is not the same that we feel in our own emotions okay so we need to be careful not to confuse the inner witness of the holy spirit with our own thoughts our own feelings our own desires our own emotions that we have so how do we you know confirm this and how do we not get confused okay there are several ways the holy spirit bears inner witness in our spirit man or the there are different ways how the holy spirit communicates to our spirit man now there are about um on the bottom of page 39 to page number 40 there are about eight different ways these are not exhaust this list is not exhaustive but just covers some common ways in which we receive the inner witness of the holy spirit so can we all read it out together please the first one quickening of scripture Sure. The, Second assurance. One, the assurance within the desire within the, the, the knowing within, within the, the prompting the, within the, the stirring within, within the, the foreknowledge within, within and the warning the, within. within thank you Elkana it was nice to hear you also say it along with us okay now we have broken this down just for us to understand, okay, uh, and recognize the inner witness of the Holy Spirit in our spirit man, okay. So we look at it, uh, each one. The first one is quickening of scripture. I'm not going to uh, speak about this because I've already spoken about it in the previous chapter, okay. The second thing is assurance within. Now, how do we have this assurance within? Okay, that is the Holy Spirit speaking to us and it's not our own emotions and feelings. Okay, so the assurance within primarily comes through the peace of God. Okay, look at what a Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7 says. Can somebody read it please? Be anxious, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made to God. And the peace of God, which surpass all understanding, will guide your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. So here it says that, you know, God's peace protects our... What does God's peace do? It protects your or guards your heart and your mind. So what does it mean? You know... Once we have released all our cares, our problems, our difficulties to God, the peace of God guards our heart and our mind. It guards our heart and mind from other anxious thoughts that can come into our hearts and minds and disturbs us. Okay, So you can see some people who are spiritually, you know, uh, they're very strong or not strong or spiritually mature. Some pe people who are intimate with God, they just love the Lord. They just, you know, always tuned into his, you know, in this presence. Such people, even when they go through difficult situations and circumstances, you can just see them having that peace and that calmness. Why? Because it is God's peace who is guarding their hearts and their minds but if our hearts and minds are very restless we need to know that we are not really in one or unity or a binding in the wine and hence we are 
you know, all of these thoughts and anxious things are troubling our hearts and minds. But we need to take God's word at his like at his word and what he is saying, because this is not this is God's word. And God cannot lie. When he's saying that his peace, the peace of God will guard our heart and mind, what we need to do is just give up everything to God and let his peace guard our heart and mind. Okay. And if it's not, then we can say. We are opening our heart and mind to the things of this world, to things that are bothering and troubling us. We just rebuke that. We just close it. We just shut it. Okay. So the other way the peace of God serves us is, you know, uh, or the uh, another way the peace of God serves us is, you know, uh, through um, what we read in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Uh, we'll just read that. Can somebody read that, please? And let, and the, let peace the peace of God rule in your heart. So wish also you are called in one body and be thankful. Amen. So uh, the peace of God also serves an other important purpose in our lives. What is that another important purpose? Here it says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Now the word rule in the Greek is very beautiful. It means empire. The word rule means empire. You know who's an empire, right? Who's an empire? Oh, uh, uh, um, umpire. Okay. Yes. Who is an umpire? Sorry? Who rules a nation? Okay. Uh, what is uh, when you play the umpire? Umpire is the one who is the one who is a referee uh, while playing matches, right? So that is the umpire. Okay. So how is, you know, uh, somebody an umpire? What is their job? Keeping the rules, okay? Deciding, telling us what is right and wrong, okay? So here, an empire is also, a, uh, like an umpire is also somebody who is able to help us to know what is right and what is wrong, okay? So the word rule here means to decide, to determine, to direct, to control, to arbitrate, and to uh, govern, okay? So basically, uh, you know, uh, what we are trying to say is, uh, through Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, is how does the peace of God serve another important purpose in our lives? For example... You're praying about something or you're going to start something new or you're getting into something new or you're associating with somebody, then one of the things that you can look for as an empire to decide, help you decide whether this is from God or not is the peace of God. So look for the peace of God in your spirit man. If you have the peace of God, it means God is speaking to your spirit man, to the feeling in your spirit man, hey, this is something right for you. You can step into it. You can get into it. You can take this job. You can start this business. You can associate with this person. But if you feel restlessness, you don't feel the peace, you don't feel that calmness, there's a lot of anxiety it means the Holy Spirit is bearing inner witness in your spirit man by saying, giving you a red signal and saying, stop. This is not what I want you to do. This is not how I want, where I want you to enter in or get into or associate with this person. Okay. So that is one of the main things that we can look for, the peace of God. The peace of God is like an empire uh, in our in our inner being saying what is right and what is wrong. So if it is, you're experiencing the peace of God, the green signal, go ahead, do it, say it, uh, you know, or um, get into it. But if you are feeling anxious, nervous, there's a lot of restlessness that is there, no peace, that means God is speaking to your spirit man, the feeling in your spirit man saying, hey, don't get into this. So this is one way you can also differentiate between the Holy Spirit speaking and your own emotions that are speaking. Elkana, can I please request you to mute your mic, please? Elkana, yeah, thank you. 
Are you all able to understand? Yes? Okay, so when you're about to make a decision, you can ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, please show me what I should do, what I shouldn't do. Or you can say, ask the Holy Spirit, is this the right thing to do for me or not? And then you look for the peace of God in your spirit man. The Bible says that peace and joy are the fruit of the spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit who is releasing it in you and me, what is he releasing? The peace of God. And by releasing the peace of God, he's telling you, go ahead and do it. Okay. The third thing is the desire within. Okay. Let's all read together Psalms chapter 37 verse 4. Can some, all of us read it together, please? Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. heart. Okay. So here the word Greek in the Hebrew is very, very interesting. One part of the meaning of this word give means he will put it in you. Okay. So this word give, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. The word give here in Hebrew, one part of the meaning means that he will put it in you or he will form or he will create in you. So there are times when God will put desires in your spirit, man, or your heart. God will form or create desires in your heart, which means that he will bring it, he'll bring those desires to you. So not only does he put those desires in you, but he will also bring those desires to you. He gives you that desires. But the point we need to understand here is that as God's people, we must live in a posture or we must position ourselves to receive God's desires. What should we do? We should position ourselves or we should be in that posture where we are delighting ourselves in God. The more we are delighting ourselves in God, you know, then he will birth those desires in us. Those desires that will be created in our hearts, that will be formed in our hearts, that they will be put there in our hearts by God. So sometimes you can, you know, just feel a desire in your heart, you know, to just give in to some mission organization. Or you can just feel a desire in your heart to, you know, uh, just move out from the work that you're doing into full-time ministry. Or maybe you're doing full-time ministry and God is giving you a desire in your heart to do something more related with that aspect of ministry, to venture into something else. Or God is giving you a desire in your heart, hey, it's now time for you to get married. Or it's time for you now to, you know, to um, get into full-time ministry. Or it's time now, he puts a desire in your heart to learn something so that you can be skilled, so that you can be useful in the kingdom of God. So all of these desires are put into us by God. It is he who gives us his desires. He is also he who brings it to us, forms it in our hearts, and also who creates it in us. But we need to understand that for God to reveal his birth, his desires in our life, what should we do? We should delight ourselves in God. Okay. Let's all read together Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24. Can we read it together, please? The fear of the wicked will come upon him and the desire of the righteous will be granted. Okay. And John chapter 15 verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. So here there's a there's precondition here. Okay. It says that, you know, the desires of who will be granted in, in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24? The righteous, those who are right in God's sight. That means when you're doing the right thing, you're living the right kind of life, what happens? God will fulfill your desire and God will also put your, his desire in your heart. And John chapter 17, verse um, uh, 15, verse 7 says that if you abide in God, his words abide in you, Ask whatever you desire and it shall be done for you. So whatever you desire, you know, you can 
God can fulfill it, can bring it to pass when the precondition is when his words abide in you. That means you're living according to his word. All of you with me? Yes? Okay. So here's the thing, right? As you and I abide in God, as you and I abide in the word, as you and I abide in the Holy Spirit, okay, the Holy Spirit births those desires inside you and you just go with it and he brings it to pass. So the desires that are there are there by God. So don't be afraid of those desires because it's the Holy Spirit that is putting that into you okay so what can be these desires it can be desires that the holy spirit can birth in you to do things in god's kingdom you know for the purpose of god for the glory of god and sometimes you know holy spirit can stir your heart up or he can put uh, to the inner witness of the holy spirit the holy spirit can lead you to fulfill those desires in your heart okay so even as i look at my life i've seen that even as i'm in children's ministry there are many times that, you know, the, uh, the Holy Spirit has birthed some desires in my heart that I want to uh, see children reach that place of spiritual maturity, children doing this, children doing that, you know, we can do this mission work, we can do this evangelism work, or I can bring in this project, I can bring in this initiative. And I know that it is not through my own understanding, it's not my own creativity, I know it's the Holy Spirit that's birthing the desire. And why is he birthing that desire? To extend God's kingdom. So even if you look at the life and the ministry of APC, there are many things that God has birthed, which is his desire. And we see that even as we go about doing it, how God is fulfilling his work, the mission and the vision through APC. Okay. So, it's the Holy Spirit who's leading you by creating those desires. So don't be afraid. Just go ahead with what he's asking you to do. Okay. All of you with me? Yes. Okay. So there are a lot of uh, examples that pastor has written about his own life. I'm not going to uh, go through it because of the lack of time, but because it is all stories. I'm sure all of you love stories and all of you will be very interested. So you can please take time uh, in the evening, not now during class to read it. Okay. But you can do so in the evening. Okay. The fourth one is the knowing within. Okay. We've already read Acts chapter 7 verses 23 to 25. When, um, when Moses became 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. Okay, And seeing one of them suffer, he defended and avenged him, who was, op who was oppressed and struck down by the Egyptian. So he supposed that his brethren would have understood that God would deliver them by his hands, but they did not understand. Okay, So what is it? What is it saying here in the scripture passage? We've already studied this before. When Moses was 40 years old, Sri Raj, can you please uh, mute your mic? Thank you. Okay. What are we saying here? Or what is this passage saying here? Scripture verse is saying here that Moses understood the call of God. How did he understand the call of God? Yes, it says here it came into his heart okay he came it came into his heart was 23 okay so it was a knowing inside he just knew inside this is the call of god this is what god wants me to do he wants me to be the leader and deliver my people out of slavery okay so he knew it he understood that god was going to raise him up to deliver his people okay so sometimes the holy spirit through the inner witness creates a knowing in our hearts for us to just know that hey this is god's plan for my life this is god's purpose this is a way he is directing me this is what he's wanting me to do okay so how do you know it to the inner witness of the holy spirit through the knowing you just know it okay so if you ask me uh what made you go into full-time ministry i can just say Hey, I just knew in my spirit, man, this is what God was calling me to do. Okay. So a deep knowing, and I'm sure we all have incidents in our life when we have known very clearly, this is what God is asking us to do. 
Okay, some of you coming into Bible College, APC Bible College, is also a knowing within. The Holy Spirit has said, hey, join this Bible College, study here. Just a knowing within. The fifth one is the prompting. Okay, um, the prompting is a little stronger and forceful than the knowing. The prompting is a little more forceful. Okay, how is it more forceful than the knowing? It, it uh, t lets you take action immediately okay so how do we know or receive the prompting from the holy spirit is when we are sensitive to the holy spirit there are many times the holy spirit will prompt you to do things i don't know if you've been prompted or you've been woken up uh, like three o'clock in the morning four o'clock or in the, in the middle of the night and god is saying pray for this person or some friend you've not met in ages the holy spirit is prompting you to pray for them or the holy spirit is prompting you to pray for you know uh, somebody in your family or the holy spirit is prompting to for you to pray about something and you don't know what it is the holy spirit is just waking you up and you can just say god holy spirit i don't know what you're prompting me to pray but i'm just going to pray and one thing you can do is pray in the spirit or sometimes the holy spirit is telling prompting you hey go and visit that person right or call that person and when you call that person, that person will say, hey, how did you know that, you know, you should call me? Say, no, I just called you. I just, you know, I just sensed and I just felt and I called you. Said, you know, the right time you call me, I want you to pray for me or I'm going through this problem. I'm going through this difficulty. Or, you know, uh, you're praying for somebody and you just share a word. They say, how did you know this? You know, or how did you say this? It was just a prompting with it, right? So the prompting uh, is something that, we hear, but also enables us to take an action, okay? So, for example, in my life, I'll tell you, like I've already mentioned this, uh, I told you I was working with one Christian organization, and I started a project uh, for, um, you know, in children's ministry, and I was doing that for five years. It was something that I was very passionate about, I loved. But they asked me, they told me that I had to leave that organization because they wanted me to go to Mumbai, and start um, that project there, but I was not willing to go. And I was basically not willing to go because I didn't feel any leading and prompting in my spirit. So I said, no, okay? But I'm not afraid to travel and go to new places because I'm, I was used to it. But, you know, I said, no, they said, you have to leave because you are our senior most staff. And if you say no, then others will also follow suit in, in line with you. If we tell them to go, they will also say no, and they'll give you as an example so i left i left in april april end and one whole month i just was at home i just rested and then june you know school started and when school started i was i was very um you know uh, feeling very disturbed i just had this prompting in my heart saying hey you know schools are started and i'm supposed to go and be ministering in schools and here i'm sitting at home and i have no avenue how i can go and minister to schools because i've lost this job there's no way that i can go and i just had this prompting in my heart i had just visited all people's church just twice i'm not part of all people's church then i was part of a mainline church and i had just this prompting in my heart to go to apc website and to check the employment page i don't know out of the blue it just came and I just, I've never gone to the website. It's the first time I went. I didn't even know they had an employment page. I just went and looked up. There was an employment page. And I didn't fit in in any of the employment opportunities there. And God was saying, send in your resume. Okay. So that is a prompting. And that leads us to the, to the sixth thing, how the Holy Spirit can direct us, is to the steering. So I was prompted to go and look at the APC website, and I saw that there was nothing that suited my role. So obviously, I can't apply, right? If I come for the interview, they'll ask me which role. I'll say I don't fit in any of those roles because I don't have any expertise. I can't lie to them. And if they tell me, what is your expertise in this area? I don't have anything. I can't go for such an interview. But God is stirring up my heart. He's telling me, apply, apply. And I'm saying, God, how can I apply when I don't fit into any of those roles right what will i say you now i'll be like the one fool going to an uh, interview and saying i don't 
you know, fit into any of these roles that you have open. But the Holy Spirit told me, or God told me, I was not too familiar with the work of the Holy Spirit then. It's only after I came to APC. God told me and I came, right? With my little understanding, I didn't know all of these things. You all are more privileged than I am. Even after studying six years in Bible college, I didn't know any of these things. So you all are really privileged, right? And I'm, I'm really telling you, not because I'm teaching in all people's church Bible college, but I studied in Bible college for six years. And I'm telling you, none of the content that I'm teaching that you are learning, you know, is what I studied in Bible college. And I was telling myself, if I just knew this way years back, it would have been so beneficial. So I'm telling all of you, you are so really, really privileged with the content you have. It is just so powerful, so amazing, because some of the Bible colleges don't have this. They have just theology, philosophy, sociology, which doesn't really make any sense. Let me tell you, six years, I don't remember anything other than theology, which I love, right? So please invest the time to study, to use all of these resources, to learn, because this is so good. So coming back, you know, there was this big stirring. So that is leading us to the next point. Pro the, the prompting is when you have, you know, you, you, you know, you have this strong, forceful knowing and it's leading you into action. But stirring is a little more stronger than that prompting. It's telling you, come on, you have to go ahead and do it. And I'm saying, God, I know you're prompting me to do it, but you're stirring, I didn't know all the stirring and all, but you're telling me, but how, where should I apply? But because the stirring was so strong in my heart, I applied, I went for the interview, and miraculously, Pastor never asked me, you know, which position you applied for. He just told me that there is an opening for school ministries, will you take it up? I was too shocked. I did not answer him for more than a minute. I was just dumbfounded right so how did it how did i know all this how did god lead me prompting and stirring so stirring is a little more bit stronger than prompting the holy spirit is telling you to really move and do something in action so let's uh, look at some examples exodus chapter 35 verses 21 and 26 we read that you know the god stirred up the hearts of the people whoever were willing and they brought gold and silver and, you know, all of the things that they have to build a tabernacle. You know what's a tabernacle, right? Yeah? You know, it's a tambu. You say that in Hindi, right? Yes? So tabernacle, the people were stirred in their hearts up to bring gold and silver and utensils and, you know, um, uh, clothes and everything that would be used for the priests. Okay, so here you read that it says everyone came whose heart was stirred and everyone whose spirit was willing and they gave their offerings. And in Exodus chapter 36 verse 2, we see that everyone whose heart was stirred came to do the work of the tabernacle. That means they came to build the tabernacle. Okay, in Ezra chapter 1 verse 1, we read that, you know, uh, Cyrus became king, okay? He took over, first the, the, the Israelites were taken as captive to Babylon. And then, you know, Babylon, the empire was overthrown and was ruled by the Persians. And, you know, after that, that 70 year period of punishment was over, you know, God stirred up the heart of the king of Persia, who was Cyrus. The Lord stirred him, uh, his spirit up to send back the Israelites back to Jerusalem so that they can build their city, they can build their walls, they can build houses, and they can rebuild the temple. So how did this pagan king who does not know anything about, all of you listening to me? Yes? How does this pagan king who does not know anything about the true and living God, how did he send the people back to Jerusalem? It was just a stirring in his heart. Another example is Nehemiah. We've already seen that. When Nehemiah heard the walls of Jerusalem were broken, what happened to Nehemiah? He was stirred up in his heart. He was weeping and moaning. So many people would have heard who were there in, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the place that Nehemiah was, but nobody's heart was stirred up or cried or felt the burden to go and build the walls of Jerusalem. 
But why did Nehemiah cry and weep and fast and moan? He says that, you know, nobody, I never told anybody what God has placed in my heart to do. So there was a stirring in his heart. God was leading him and God gave him everything that he needed. The permission of the king, all the equipments, all the provisions that he needed to build the wall of Jerusalem. And he went and built the wall of Jerusalem. How did he do, do it? A knowing within, a prompting, and also through the stirring. All this is the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Let's look at another example. Haggai chapter 1 verse 14. We see that, you know, uh, the people of Israel, they come back from exile. They start rebuilding the temple, but they abandon it. They do a half job. Other job they do, half job they do. And then the, the temple was not built for 16 years. And then Haggai says or records that God stirred up the hearts of the governor, the high priest and the people. And they go back to rebuilding the temple. Now, why did these people do it after 16 years? Because God stirred up their hearts to do it. So God used the prophets like Zechariah, Haggai and the people to complete the work of building the temple. God, so God stirred up their hearts. Are you all able to understand? So when this is how we know or this is how we can differentiate between our own emotions and what God is leading or guiding us to do. The seventh one is the foreknowledge within. Okay, Remember Jesus said the Holy Spirit, will, when he comes, he will show you things that is going to happen in the future. So the Holy Spirit knows the end from the beginning. He knows what is going to happen in your life. He knows what is going to happen 5 years, 10 years, 20 years from now. And he can reveal that to you. But the important thing is that we need to listen to him. Okay. One example of foreknowledge is an example we can look at Simon's life. Simon in the New Testament in, uh, in Luke chapter 2 verses 25 to 32. Now Simon was a very devout man. He was a very old man and uh, he had a very interesting experience. God revealed to Simon by the Holy Spirit that he will not die till he saw the Till he sees whom? He will not die till he sees whom? Till he sees the Messiah. Okay? Yes. Till he sees the Messiah, till he sees Jesus Christ. And so we, Simon received this, but if you say, how did Simon receive this revelation? We do not know. It might be a knowing within, an assurance within, a prompt within, whatever. But we see that he had a foreknowledge that God had given him about something about the future. God was telling him, Simon, you're not going to die till you see the Messiah. And then amazing thing is on the day when Jesus comes, his, his, his parents bring uh, Jesus. What's happening there at the back? The day when Jesus is brought to the temple, what happens? What happens is that, you know, Simon receives a foreknowing knowledge from the Holy Spirit, okay? And understanding that at, this is the day, this is the time, go into the temple, you are going to see the Messiah. Now, he was not there in the temple. He might be in the surrounding place. He was an old man, maybe he was resting. But how did he know that this is the day, this is the time, is through the foreknowledge that the Holy Spirit was giving him, the prompting, the stirring. He went into the temple and there are so many people there. There are so many babies there. But how did he recognize that Jesus is the Messiah is also through the foreknowledge or the inner, inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So we see that, you know, uh, Simon had... A foreknowledge that he's going to see the Messiah, but did not know when and where, what day. But also in the day when it happened, he received the foreknowledge, hey, this is the day, this is the moment, go into the temple and you are going to see the Messiah. Okay. So the Holy Spirit works in similar ways in our day and time. He will reveal things to us. He will tell us. He will give us the foreknowledge 
all we need to do is just be willing to hear from him okay the last one the eighth one is a warning within okay the warning within so the holy spirit also warns us there are different ways that the holy spirit warns us which can be very different from our emotions so when you're praying about something you're asking god god should i get into this job should i do this should i join that should i take this loan or should i you know start the building project now or you know should i marry this person whatever you know if it is the right thing for you to do the holy spirit will give you peace but if it's not the right thing the holy spirit can warn you how can he warn you you can feel a tightening you know a feeling of uneasiness there's a feeling of the lack of peace and you feel that hey something is just not right it's not your emotions you know your emotions can come and go but this feeling every time you're thinking about it every time you're uh, indulging in it or you're planning there's a deep sense of restlessness there's a deep sense of lack of peace there is no joy so the holy spirit is telling you hey be careful don't step into it don't go into it and so on so the challenge for you and me is to train our spirit man to listen and understand how the holy spirit is leading us and guiding us i'll give you an example in acts chapter 20 verses 22 to 23 the apostle paul he sees that you know he's going to jerusalem but he feels bound in the spirit he's very clearly saying not his emotions Okay, he knows it's bound in his spirit. Our emotions can come and go, but our spirit man is there. It's much more stronger part of us, and we know that. And he feels bound in the spirit, and he says, you know, he knows that when he goes to Jerusalem, things are not going to be right for him. And he knows that the Holy Spirit is also testifying that in every city and town that he's going to face trials and difficulties and persecutions so he paul says i feel bound in my spirit bound means what somebody is holding you like this tight not letting you to go there is no freedom so the holy spirit is actually telling paul that there is danger in jerusalem he is warning him so the challenge for me and you know you or you and me is that we need to train our spirit to be sensitive to the holy spirit So how do we train ourselves to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit? How do you train yourselves to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit? Praying, reading God's word, worship, praying in tongues, right? Also learning to be calm and still so that you can hear what the Holy Spirit is saying and always being tuned to the Holy Spirit. not only in difficult situations at all times of the day holy spirit what do i say what do i pray what do i do what are you telling me right so when you are constantly tuned into the holy spirit you will be sensitive and that is how the holy spirit will bear inner witness in your uh, spirit man but even as the holy spirit bears inner witness in your holy in your inner man you need to conform it say so you need to confirm sorry not conform you need to confirm if this is what the holy spirit is telling you so how do you confirm you go back to the scripture you say god i heard this it's an important decision thank you for speaking to me i just feel peace uh, that means you're telling me to go ahead or you i'm not feeling peace that means you're telling me not to go ahead can you confirm it with your word and i'm sure god will speak to us through his word because the holy spirit will not reveal anything or tell us anything that is against god's what is written in god's word okay or the word will not tell us to do anything that god is asking us to do also we need to ensure that there is no natural emotions involved okay how do you ensure that that means you need to be very calm composed leave all your anxious thoughts all your thoughts just be tuned into the holy spirit when you're tuned into the holy spirit you know for sure this is the holy spirit who is speaking to you and not your emotions also when the holy spirit leads you it will always lead you to glorify jesus christ and you know hey yeah i think this is what god is telling me to do because when i do this this is going to bring glory to god and you will see it aligned with the overall purpose that god has for your life so 
these are some things that you need to do and ensure the more you are tuned into the Holy Spirit, the more you're hearing from him, the more you will be able to know with clarity and assurance, this is not my emotions, this is just the Holy Spirit. So to come to that place, you have to grow into that place. There's no way I can help you to how to, you know, other than this to tell you how to differentiate between your emotions, your feelings, what the Holy Spirit is saying is you need to grow, you need to learn, you need to experience. I have made mistakes when I've gone in my emotions, my feelings, done things, I've realized and I've come back and I'm now I've been learning and training how to listen to the Holy Spirit. So it's a journey. The Holy Spirit will teach you and guide you, but you need to desire, you need to op be open, you need to pray, and the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. Amen? Okay, I hope I helped you, um, uh, Shani, answer your question. Anyone has any questions, online students? Any questions? Okay, no questions. Thank you, Elkanah. Appreciate that. Thank you, Gerald. Thank you, Jeevan. Sabagya. Okay, if there's no questions, we'll end class. Yes, Shani? I just have a question. When is our next assessment? Oh, well, just one minute. Sorry. Can you just leave quietly? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. When is our next assessment and what was the class average for the first one? When is your next assessment? Your next when assessment. Assessment and what, what was the class average for the first one? Oh, the first assessment uh, it was 25 points no what was the class average for the first one? Oh, what's the class average i've not looked at it and when is our next one the next one is when we finish uh the seventh lesson i'll give you the second assessment That's don't worry if you've not done well in the first assessment you have three more to go and i'm sure all of you will do well and you will pass the course so is that when we finish the second book? Is that when the second one will be? No, this book, when you finish lesson seven. I oh, will... seven of the book. Oh, okay. yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I hope that helps, Shani. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank you for joining class. God bless. Thank you.